figured I only had one simple choice. That was, uh, do I make the speech American style? Which I'm led to believe is a mild roasting. <laughs> interspersed with kind of nostalgic and sentimental stories. Or do I make it English style? Yeah. <laughs> which is a merciless and brutal <laughs> character dismemberment <laughs> and public shaming. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see <laughs> what route, or should I say route, I have taken. So I got, to I got together with Scott a few weeks ago and asked him what uh, if he had any ideas about what should be in the speech? Of course, I had no intention of including anything he said. <laughs> but I thought it'd be funny to hear him run on nonetheless. <laughs> so he was like, to give you a flavor of what he was like. <laughs> he was like, yeah, tell them, tell them how I cycled across Asia and built a boat and sailed down the Mekong River I got sucked into a whirlpool. Tell them how... What did he say? Tell them how I learned Kung Fu with Shaolin monks in China. And then he said something like, Tell them how I cycled a thousand miles in three weeks with a tropical intestinal disease. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm not sure why he would say something like that to me. I think he was actually encouraging me to talk about his bowels. <laughs> so, if you know Scott already... I know, you asked me to do it while you were eating, so I don't know. <laughs> Calm down, it's not that bad. <laughs> so... <laughs> If you know Scott, you probably already know about Scott's history of tropical diseases and related intestinal catastrophes. <laughs> but anyway, Scott was like giving me the whole Indiana Jones story, which is partially true to be fair. But Scott is more like Indiana Jones with irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> So, so, so as much as I'd love to go more deeply into this topic, I'm actually going to try and keep things clean for the, for the sake of the children present and the reputation of the Zen Center. <laughs> so, I figured... I figured it would be best to relate some stories which would best convey how Scott and I um, express our fondness for each other. Because to, to outsiders it might just look like uh, hostility. <laughs> <laughs> so one story, Scott came over to visit me in the UK when uh, he was living in the USA. And I was giving him a, local, a, a tour of the local area. Um, and he asked me about the local economy. So I proceeded to give him some informative facts about local initiatives and uh, population and the trend of large employers leaving the region. And so after five minutes, I turned to him expecting him to be captivated and he was fast asleep. <laughs> so I punched him in the arm and he's like, oh, you're so freaking boring. <laughs> of course, his language was slightly more colourful than that. 
So this isn't the first time actually Scott has fallen asleep immediately after asking me a question. <laughs> but his uh, indignation at being woken up this time was was quite special. <laughs> so, next story. Um, let me just consult my phone. <laughs> I had to remove a lot of stories, actually. <laughs> So, okay, so a few years ago, I don't know, maybe six years ago, Scott and I were on a climbing trip and we were camping out and uh, we were eating a pre-cooked fish for supper and uh, it was one of these mackerel boil in a bag fishes and Scott was uh, preparing the dish and he cut the seal on the on the plastic bag, pulled out this fish dripping with oil, and then casually slapped me around the face with it. <laughs> so I had fish oil infused in my beard. <laughs> I didn't know where to wipe it. Well, I thought, actually, there's only one place I'm going to wipe my face right now, and that's on Scott's sleeping bag. <laughs> so I waited for him to disappear, and he took a pee. I grabbed his sleeping bag. <laughs> but it was already so foul smelling and greasy. <laughs> I couldn't bear to bring it to my face. <laughs> so on that occasion he got me twice. <laughs> so and a few years ago <laughs> Scott paid me to rebuild his company website, which was a little naive. So while I was waiting for Scott to give me some written content for the site, I pasted in Latin text, which is a normal practice for web designers, so I could visualize how the pages looked. And but this is as this was Scott and the site wasn't yet live, I interspersed the Latin text with derogatory remarks for Scott to find. <laughs> And so, anyway, this, the, the content was eventually swapped out, or so we thought. <laughs> the site went live, and several months later, a customer approached Scott. Um, and she said something like, she wasn't sure whether there was a, an industry joke she wasn't getting on the Why Us page. <laughs> so, sure enough, we had a look, and under the Why Us heading, was my original comments about Scott enacting a particular type of job <laughs> on customers with wood. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Scott was naturally curious about what stories I wanted to uh, include in my speech. Obviously, he was a little worried. <laughs> so I said I especially, so I told him I especially liked the story of the decrepit old lady, I'm sorry, Rhea, <laughs> uh, saving you from drowning in your kayak in a calm, still pond. <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 don't tell that, that's not what happened. <laughs> So, yeah, to be fair, Scott actually likes to jump off waterfalls in his kayak. But uh, it seems he needs the help of a geriatric, sorry reason, <laughs> to save him from drowning when paddling on a calm pond. <laughs> so just to allay any fears today's parents may have about Scott's history of free soloing, race car driving, and kayaking in some of the most dangerous rivers in the world, maybe. Uh, I do generally think that Scott has turned his back on adrenaline-filled activities in favour of boredom-filled activities, <laughs> like staring at the walls of the Zen Centre. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, so, despite everything I've said, <laughs> I, I'd like to reassure you, and I'm sure you all know, that Sky is actually a decent fellow. There's people laughing. <laughs> Um, I might have to read this on my phone. <laughs> Didn't remember this bit, but it's hard to remember. Just trying to pay him some compliments. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so the fact that I can give him so much stick, I think, is a testament to his character. Not that he's having a lot of say in it right now. I particularly enjoy and appreciate Scott's honesty and perceptiveness. I have to concede that even at times he's quite funny. <laughs> he's always willing to laugh at himself, which is just as well, considering the calamities <laughs> that have interspersed his life. <laughs> Most of them related to incontinence issues. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so, so anyway, I now wish him the very best on his journey together with Danae. We've had many great experiences together. I'd love to share more. But uh, that is not appropriate for a wedding. <laughs> so um, it's traditional for the for the best man in England to give the groom some advice, and um, so I've been married myself for over 20 years to my wonderful wife Lauren, who's a, unfortunately sick here today. She's not here today anyway; she's sick, and it kind of ruins my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's just pretend she's here. <laughs> so. I can honestly say, in 20 years, this is perhaps only the second time... Is, is this working? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah! This is only the second time I've been able to speak for more than 10 minutes without being interrupted. <laughs> oh, she can't hear it, so, you know. <laughs> so, um... The first time, I, well, the first time was actually when I made the same joke at another best man speech in England. So my advice to Sky is to never make your wife the butt of your jokes in public. <laughs> Obviously, I myself am finding it hard to learn this one. So Scott did ask, also ask me to say something meaningful in my speech, but obviously, as I'm so ill-equipped in this department. I am going to just uh, leave it to, to the words of some others. I'm nearly finished. <laughs> so, a few quotes gleaned from the pages of wisdom manifested by a sage called Google. <laughs> <laughs> so, deep listening lays at the foundation of a, of a successful marriage. That bit actually was mine. However, listening to your wife is like reading the terms and conditions of a website. You understand nothing, but still you say, yes, I agree. <laughs> All men make mistakes, but married men find out about them sooner. This is true from my own experience. And a, a, finally, a quote from Cher, of all people. The trouble with some women is they get all excited about nothing, and then they marry him. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think maybe Cher is a Buddhist, and she's actually making a profound statement about the emptiness of all phenomena. <laughs> So with that Buddhist in joke, um, the toast. Do we have our here, here. tasty beverages <laughs> aloft? <laughs> so to the newlyweds, Scott and Danae, here, here. To, uh, to their future happiness and to the future happiness of everybody here today. 
Just gone today. I'm done. <laughs>